I don't need to be cutting these pieces of paper right next to my microphone. Probably sounds like some sort of terrible storm. Hello people waiting. Sorry, bit of a quick turnaround today because uh, we just did the Science of the Queen on Facebook. I reckon uh, maybe three minutes to go. Well, two more things to do with the things that I am doing, and then we'll get started. Oh, what? Ah, ah. <laughs> oh, hello, people that have just arrived. Everything's fine. <laughs> I'm just knocking a lot of things over and faffing, which for anyone who's been to anything I've ever done apart from this will not be a surprise for them. Probably top up my glass of water because I've been drinking it. Oh no! Story time! Oh, disaster. I'll sort that out later. Oh, I just knocked half my queen story time to the ground. Get back up there, Edward the whatever. Okay, shutting the door, shutting the door to the office, which is actually my kitchen. Got my little bits of tape, I've got my glass of water, I've got my ruler, and got an A4 piece of paper. Right. Deep apologies. Let's go. Here we are. Water, 
Not too close to the computer. Okay, oh, thanks for your patience, people. Oh, thanks for liking this. That's what I should say. While you're waiting, please like me. Okay. Here we go. I'm really, I'm really flipping you now. You ready? Hello everybody. Hello. My name is Lara. You are the Science Alliance and this is All Ages Hamed. So this week we are still thinking scientifically. That's like the theme of the term. But today we're learning about uh, measuring. How you measure things accurately and precisely. What is the difference? Um, I'd like to start off with a little bit of history because I just thought this was this was interesting. I've got a few different historical measurements here, ways that people used to measure things in ye olde new times. I'm going to give you some uh, instructions and I'd like you to do the thing and then tell me what the action, which, which measurement the action links to. So we've got a foot here which um, you might have still heard people still describe themselves as being like five foot tall but in the modern day we'd say that's 30 centimeters an inch is two and a half centimeters a fathom is 1.8 meters a cubit is 44 centimeters you've got a mile talk about those all the time a yard is 91 centimeters and about 4,000 meters squared what what are these things right so first of all hold out your arm one of these was measured using an, a man's forearm so your forearm, I didn't know this, it's just from your wrist to your elbow, not your hand. So from your wrist to your elbow. So this is how people would measure things out. I don't know, maybe a tailor would measure cloth using his forearm. What do you call a form, forearm measurement? Is it a foot, an inch, a cubit? Uh, the next one uh, is a foot. So a man's foot. What do you reckon? Which one are we going to call a man's foot? Um, a fathom. Wait, no, I'm not, I'll have to mix it up because I've already... Oops, giving you the answer. Um, one of these means a thousand double paces. So if you step and then you step again and you do that a thousand times, that's one of these. What do you reckon? Um, hold out your hand, poke your thumb up. Legend has it that in the 1100s, King Henry I said that one of these measurements was going to be the distance from his nose to the tip of his thumb. What do you reckon? From the nose to the tip of your thumb, would that be a cubit or a fathom or a yard or... Uh, one of them in the Middle Ages was, I don't know why I just find this adorable, one of them was three barleycorns lined up alongside each other. So here's a picture if you don't know what barley is, uh, it's crop grown a lot in England, UK. Uh, it's used to feed animals mainly or we make beer out of it. So these are the barley corns, so three of those all in a row, like that was how you'd measure something out for someone. It's, it's just adorable. Which one do you reckon that is? Um, uh, stretch your arms out as wide as they can go. Oh, feels nice. So it would obviously be a man doing it uh, to measure it out. Which one of these do you reckon is the length of a man's arms from the tip of one finger to the tip of another finger? Um, oh yeah, and the amount of land that uh, oxen could plow in one day. Oh, I just love history. The amount of land that an oxen, two oxen I guess, could plow in one day which one of the, I'm going to give you, if you've got the worksheet, that's great. If you haven't, then I'm just going to show you the board. See if you can match those up a bit more properly for me. Here we go. So I've got them all listed. Cubit, about 4,000 metres squared, a mile, a fathom, a yard, an inch and a foot. And which one of those descriptions matches those units? And most importantly, if you've done that already, why is this not a great way to measure things? Why have humans moved on from measuring things using their feet or their forearms? I'm only going to give you 10 seconds because you've, you've probably done the first bit already. We'll go through the answer to the first one. In five, four, three... Two, slowing down so I feel like I might have gone a bit fast. Uh, one, and right, a cubit, 44 centimetres. That was uh, a man's forearm was a cubit. That's where a cubit comes from. About 4,000 metres squared is the amount of land an oxen could pull in one day. And the, the word for that is an acre. You, you must have heard of an acre of land. Um, in America, an acre is still like a legal definition. I mean, obviously, it's not... Doesn't, it's no longer just the amount of land an ox can pull in a day, but I just love that. A mile, confusingly, uh, Latin for 1,000 is meal. So a 1,000 double steps 
is one mile. Please, if you love numbers and you love walking, please test this out. Get a stretch of ground that you know is a mile and count your double steps and see how many you get. A fathom was a man's outstretched arms. A yard was apparently Henry I's nose to his thumb. An inch was three barleycorns laid side by side. And a foot is obviously a foot. Um, just to note that, you know, I called my business Theatre of Science. We do a lot of science, don't we? So I thought I'd bring a bit of theatre in, because if you ever go and see a Shakespeare play, this might be useful, right? Have you ever, you've ever heard of The Tempest? Very famous Shakespeare play, the last play he ever wrote. A uh, bunch of people get washed up on an island, just wander around for ages while magic happens to them. So Ariel is the kind of big fairy type magic creature on the island. And he's singing, or they are singing, to uh, the prince that his father, the king, has drowned. And this is what Ariel sings. Full fathom five thy father lies, of his bones are coral made, those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of him that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. Isn't that amazing? So yeah, full fathom five thy father lies. So next time you go into the tempest, you'll be like, oh yeah, oh I see, yeah, it's just five five of them down under the sea. The king is uh, the king's fine. Spoiler, it's all. It's all fine. Right, so why is this not a very good way of measuring things? Well, hopefully you're saying things like um, everyone's foot could be a slightly different length or like barleycorns, you know, they come in slightly different sizes, presumably. Is the ox hungry or has it just had a meal? Is it a very old ox? Is it a very young ox? Like I've put here, measuring different things at different times using different people, etc., would give you very different results, right? So <clears throat> it's not a very precise method. It's actually not a very accurate method either. So let's look at what the difference is between, well, let's first of all look at what precision means, actually. Uh, oh yeah, so now we have very, very precise and accurate measurements. Now the definition of one meter is, you ready? The length of the path traveled by light in a vacuum in one, 299 million, 490, 200, 458th of a second. Um, which might seem sort of ridiculous and complicated, but obviously the great thing about that is that light always travels at the same speed through a vacuum, like where there are no particles. So one meter to me is gonna be the same meter to the person down the street, the same meter on the other side of the world. Which is much better, isn't it? Than you getting more cloth if your tailor happens to have long arms. Okay, so precision then. What is precision? Here we are, I wrote it down. Precision is how close your measurements are to each other. OK, that's how if something if your measurement is precise, it means if you measure it again and again and again, you get very similar answers. OK, so for example, hopefully you've got a bit of A4 paper with you. Could you please measure the length, the longest bit of that A4, A4 paper? So measure from the top to the bottom of the A4 paper and then put it down and go like uh, and then do it again. Measure it as many times as you can and write down the different results that you get. Do you get the same measurement every single time? Do you get slightly different measurements every time? I'm just going to get rid of these. It's actually the last time that I need them. There we go. So you've got to think about how you're measuring it as well, which is why I say maybe put it down and pick it up again. Uh, I've got a lovely big metre rule here that I'm going to use. So I get... Oh, I am going to give you the answer. So be as, be as precise and accurate as you can. Uh, yeah, I definitely get 31, 31 centimetres. Uh, no, I get 30 centimetres, 30.1 centimetres. So how, what's that in millimetres? There's 10 millimetres in a centimetre. So I'll say I get 301 millimetres. That's how long my piece of paper is. I'll do it one more time. Put it all down. Uh, try again. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about why my equipment isn't very good. 31... Uh, I'm going to say... I'm going to say 300. I'm going to say 300. 
So on Facebook, where there were comments, people were commenting frantically. You might have got exactly the same result each time. You might have got slightly different results. So my results here, we would say that they're quite precise because they're quite close to each other, okay? If, I, if you were on a ship as it was moving around, trying to do the same thing, you probably wouldn't get as precise measurements because, like, you might have noticed how if you measure it like that, you'll get one answer, but if your paper happens to be slightly slanty, then you might get a longer result by accident, or, you know, the ruler could move. So precision means how narrow this range of results is, okay? Accuracy is something a little bit different. Accuracy is how close to your measurements, how close your measurements are to the true value. So basically, um, kind of what we think of as by accuracy, like how right are you? If, if the piece of paper, uh, it turns out is, how long is the piece of paper? 29.7 centimetres, so 207, 297 millimetres. 27.7 centimetres is piece of paper. 297 millimetres is the correct answer, so I was... I wasn't completely accurate, was I? I was all right. Um, but yeah, that's what accuracy means. So a question to see if you have understood that. Here's a ruler, right? Here's your, the typical ruler. Something terrible happens to your ruler without you noticing. Your ruler gets very stretched and then you try and measure this pencil. Um, how is this stretched ruler going to affect your results? Would it make your results more precise, less precise, more accurate, less accurate, same amount of precision, same amount of accuracy? How would measuring a pencil with this really stretched ruler affect your results? Would it make your measurements sort of more far? Would you get more different measurements or would they be closer together or would it be not the true value or more close to the true value? Oh, I'm just going to stop talking. Drink some of this water. What do you reckon? Like six seconds? Five? Four? Mm. Mm. Well, well, well done if you said, well done if you said that the precision wouldn't actually be affected. So you're, if you were measuring it, if you're good at measuring things and you measure it the same way each time, your results shouldn't change, should they? So the ruler is saying, what, let's say about two centimetres. You'll, you'll get about two centimetres every single time. So precision is the same, but the accuracy, it's going to be way off because the real measurement looks like it's more like four centimetres. So you're really far away from the true value because your ruler is wrong. OK, right. Uh, let's do an activity to think a little bit more about accuracy and precision. Have you got a glass of water and a little bit of sand tape? And we're going to say that we need to measure the uh, water level of this glass of water. All right. So what I'd like you to do is to Eventually, we're going to look down on the water, get a little piece of sellotape and just put the sellotape level with the level of the water. All right. But I want you to look down on it pretty much as much as you can. So first of all, I bring my glass of water towards me and it starts wobbling. Behold, how is that going to affect my results? So if I'm trying to put my piece of tape on there, is it going to make them less precise, more precise, less accurate, more accurate? Well, it's going to make them less precise and, and less accurate, isn't it? The results are going to be uh, less precise because sometimes I'll measure it really low and sometimes I'll measure it really high because it's moving around. So there'll be a big range of results, but it also won't be very accurate, be far away from the true value, okay? Right, so let's have a go. Oh, I've just rolled it again. I've just realised that actually, if, if it's going, if say that's the true value in the middle and it's going high and low and high and low and high and low, if I measured it like 10 times and then I took an average, it might actually be quite accurate because you'd think on average, like maybe I'd measure it five times too high and five times too low. But if I took an average, then it might come out in the middle. I'm not sure about that now. This is why it's always good to teach a lesson three times because it's the third time that you go, wait. Oh. Right, my water is still, so I'm now going to try and put this sellotape on. You do the same thing. Remember, from above. So here we go. Uh, there's the water level. Going in. Yeah, I think that I've smashed that. Oh, wait, I don't want to set the water movie again when I unstick myself. There we go. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. More on this side. Okay, so. Oh, can you take the suspense? Let's go down and see. 
how precise and how accurately I've placed my water. Oh my goodness. Well, this is a disaster. Look, so this is the side that I thought was accurate and it's actually way high. I kind of wish I could strain out, but I can't because I'm holding on to you. But anyway, can you see how from far above, it really looks like the cellar tape is level with the water, but now I've got down again, it's ridiculously too high. What we have to do to get a good, accurate result close to the true level of the water is we've got to get down on eye level with the water. So basically, so you can't see any water in the background, see? So until it's flat, there we go. And then the tape ends up being quite a lot lower mm, and, and more accurate. There we go, that, more accurate than that. What's happening there? Um, that is something called parallax. Parallax basically just means the way things seem to move position uh, when you move. It's a big problem for astronomers, things kind of moving in the background, making things look different. Um, so yes, what we have to do to avoid parallax error is to get on a level with the thing that we're trying to measure, okay? Oh, I've got to tell you my new favourite word, which is meniscus. You know what a meniscus is? If you, especially in test tubes, this is a problem. You might have noticed, you've seen a test tube um, full of water, that the water seems to be kind of curved like that. Or sometimes it, um, water does this, curves the other way. This is the meniscus, because water particles are kind of sticky, right? They've got like a water surface tension. They've got a film on them. So it's very important if you're measuring water like this, that you go from either the bottom of the meniscus every time or from the top of the meniscus, Men meniscus, I don't know, I can't stop saying it. Meniscus. Got to do the right place of your meniscus so that you don't accidentally measure it too high. What's your hair? Oh, right. Um, I think you're ready for my little question sheet. I think so. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I've got six targets that an archer has fired at here. And in each case, I want you to say whether you think the archer has been accurate or precise or neither or both. And I've said you can add words like quite and very if you like. Again, don't worry if you're not right. Um, some of them are kind of, some of them I was really puzzling over for ages. <laughs> so I've put what I think. So here we've got the first one. Um, we've got a target where four arrows have been fired and they're all the same distance away from the centre of the target, but none of them are on the centre of the target, but they're all the same distance away, sort of in a circle. So is that precise or accurate or neither? The second one, all the arrows are just in the centre of the target, at the bullseye. The third one, all the arrows are quite, really quite close together, but they're not on the target. The fourth one, the arrows are, I think, pretty much just scattered randomly. The fifth one, all the arrows are really close together, but in a totally different place again. And the sixth one, the arrows are in a triangle, um, but it's not around the bullseye, it's around just kind of another half of the board. So one angle's arrow's right on the edge and the other arrow's on either side of the bullseye. What do you think? Precise, accurate, neither, both, very, not very. So go through a couple of them. So this this first target, well, they're all the same distance away from the target, aren't they? I know they're in different places. I think I've probably put the hard one at the start because they're not very accurate, are they? They're not very accurate because they're not none of them are hitting the bullseye. But I think they're not too I think they're quite precise because they're all the same distance away. They're just in different places, if you know what I mean. So I've put quite precise and a bit accurate, <laughs> not very accurate. The second one I think is easy. They've been very accurate because they've hit the bullseye uh, and they've been very precise as well because all three of their arrows have gone to exactly the same place. 
The third one, the arrows are really close together. They've got pretty much the same result each time. So I've put it's precise, but it's not accurate because it hasn't hit the bullseye. The fourth one, they're just random, aren't they? It's not precise and it's not accurate. The fifth one, I think it's the same as the third one. Precise, but not accurate. And the sixth one, um, well, no, it's neither, is it? It's not precise and it's not accurate because it's in a triangle, but they're it doesn't look like they were really aiming for anything. So well done if uh, well done if you understood it and you got them. Well done if you didn't understand it, but you're still here. You're not just off crying in a corner and you understand it a bit better now. So just before we do the GTSD question, because I know you love it. Um, let's talk a little bit about like which piece of equipment to use for the job. So I've got a ruler here with centimetres on it. Just about see the big spaces and millimetres, the very little spaces. Um, if I wanted to measure this Lego brick, could I measure it with this ruler? Would this ruler be a good piece of equipment to measure my Lego brick? Um, yeah, it would. Here, come and tell me which one you think would be better. My beautiful old meter ruler, which is made of wood, or my metal ruler. Here we are. So this is my beautiful wooden ruler which has got centimetres on the top and millimetres on the bottom. And here is my uh, metal ruler. Which one of these do you think would be, would give a more accurate answer if I wanted to measure this Lego brick? And why? Which one should I use and why? Five, four, three, two, one. I'm thinking that probably, because they're both millimetres, right? If one was centimetres and one was millimetres, you might say the one with millimetres because that's going to give us a more accurate answer, okay? If I'm holding it here at the top, then I've just got to say, well, it's about three centimetres. Whereas if I hold it above where I've got millimetres as well, I can say, oh, it's actually 3.2 millimetres. Notice that to avoid parallax error, I'm going directly above as well. If I was looking at it from the side, look, suddenly it's gone down to 30.1. Uh, 30 um, but look, my meter rule is all sort of mashed up at the start, isn't it? So I don't even quite know exactly where to put my Lego thing. If I was measuring something that was two millimeters, that one would be absolutely useless. So I think, well done if you said the metal one, that is gonna be more accurate. Um, if I was measuring like this, this little speck, which is on my table, could I measure that using a ruler? Well, not really. We've sort of got the same problem as we had with the centimeters and the Lego brick, haven't we? Because my ruler, the little, millimetres on my ruler aren't really small enough for me to measure that spec properly. What I can say, at best, I can say it's about a millimetre long or maybe just over a millimetre. If I wanted to measure something small, I'd have to use a different piece of equipment, maybe something delicious like a vernier caliper or something like that, which uh, you'll get to if you do A-level physics, which you should. Right, I'm so pleased with the uh, GCSE question that I found to test your test what you've learned today. Um, I have had to change it a little bit for copyright reasons. First of all, just before we go to the GCSE question, I'll just do my ad for how on earth I can do these lessons for free online. Um, if you don't know me, if you've never seen me before, then, sorry, I'm just putting my little wormy up in the right place. Uh, yeah, everything I do is free. Everything is on social media. Even the printouts for the lessons are free. And uh, how it works is, Anyone who can and wants to uh, goes to my about section on YouTube, not children, just adults who do this, and clicks the link to this website called Coffee, where you can sign up to support me with like five or six quid a month, and I send you nice stuff. I can't believe it's a job, but it's really working. So I send out a Theatre of Science magazine to all the lovely people who choose to support me. This is a really good time to sign up because it's the bumper summer issue that you get. If you sign up now, I'll post you this. Uh, it's got a beautiful comic, husband is a graphic designer, helps a lot. Uh, so I write it and he does that. It's got a quiz, which seed are you? Because it's all about seeds. I'll send you a very cute little paper clip and a biodegradable plastic bag so you can do some seed growing activities. I'll send you a little packet of mystery free seeds. I'm, just, I'm super proud of Theatre Science Magazine. Thank you very much to everyone who's receiving it. And if you've signed up recently and you haven't got yours, uh, then I just posted a load out this morning. So thank you. Please watch the post box. Okay, this GCSE question. Here we go, you ready? So. Suddenly, it's better. Oh, I know. Sorry, it's because I zoomed in to look at uh, the. There we go. That's better. <laughs> right. A student measures the length of their pet worm as shown below. They decide that their pet worm is nine centimeters long. 
Can you suggest, please, three things the student could do to make their measurement more accurate without getting a new ruler? So keeping the same ruler, only using this ruler and this worm, what three things could they do to make their measurement more accurate? All right, so that you've got a ruler here, um, there's a little gap, and then it starts with centimetres on the bottom and millimetres on the top, and you've got a worm next to the ruler, which is sort of wiggling along. And the ruler's got a smiley face, but that, that just happens to be the image that I found that's not relevant here. And that was my husband blowing his nose. That's not related to the lesson, apologies. There are so many ways to lose marks here. I'm almost like excited by how hard this GCSE question is because it seems really easy, but it's actually really difficult. And your summary question, what I think you should be able to do is please explain the difference between accuracy and precision in your own words. While you're doing it, I'm going to write down the classic things that people said that were wrong. Because I bet you say some of these. I did. I wrote the wrong answer for one of them. Here we go, right. I've got all the wrong answers on the board. How are you getting on? So one of the, one of the things that I said, which was, was wrong, is line the worm up with the end of the ruler. It's not such an obvious thing to do. Did you notice that the worms lined up with one centimetre? So your, all your measurements are gonna be one centimetre off. So I was like, line the, the worm up with the end of the ruler. Have a look at the diagram again. Why is line the worm up with the end of the ruler not gonna get you a mark? Line the worm up with the end of the ruler. They're so mean, but it's so clever. Why is it not right? It's because look, the start of the ruler doesn't start at zero. So if you line it up with the start of the ruler, your measurement's still going to be out because you don't start measuring until about, what, like half a centimetre. So what you had to say to get the mark at GCSE was line the worm up with, uh, with zero. Line the worm up with zero. And that got you a mark. Um, stretch the worm. What do you reckon? A lot of people saying make sure the worm is stretched out. No, don't be stretching the worm. It's like if you were measuring a piece of elastic, isn't it? If you stretch the piece, obviously cruel to stretch worms, never do it. But if you're measuring elastic and you stretched it, then your result wouldn't be accurate, would it? Because when you let the elastic go, it would get shorter. So you wouldn't be measuring the true value. So don't be stretching the worm. Uh, make the worm straight. That would get you a mark. And uh, use the millimetre scale. So the worm was next to the centimetre scale. You need to use the millimetre scale to make your result more accurate because it, it might be a bit more or less than nine centimetres. So you want to put the worm over here. But you wouldn't get a mark for saying, uh, turn the ruler around because it's GCSE and they are pretending that they're very foolish and that you, they don't know what you mean unless you say it exactly. So you could have, when you said turn the ruler around, you could have meant just like do that, flip it over. Mm. You've got to use very precise, accurate language to get these marks. And uh, explain the difference between accuracy and precision in your own words. Well, I'm just hoping that you could do that because uh, I can't give you the answer because then they would be my own words, but just for a recap. Precision is how close your measurements are to each other and accuracy is how close your measurements are to the true value. Accuracy is how right you are. Precision is how close to, how similar your results are. Cool, all right, folks, that is the end of today's home ed lesson on measuring. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm just gonna quickly swoosh over to Facebook just in case anyone's left me any little comments or questions, it's always useful because uh, there's no comments you'll have noticed on YouTube videos. Um, but sometimes when I go over to Facebook,
people have left me some comments there on my posts saying things like, Lara, you're writing backwards, you can stop that. Or, Lara, you froze 20 minutes ago and you haven't noticed, you know, stuff like that. Useful, uh, constructive, constructive feedback. Lara, where's your board rubber? We bought you a board rubber and posted it to you and you're still using your fingers, it's disgusting and rude. Yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, let's, oh, wow, great. Oh, Robin and Hissy are here, brilliant. That's, uh, Hissy is Robin's pet snake. Oh, yes, <laughs> nice. Hi, Jack and Mary, who probably haven't got to this point because they're not actually watching, they're just gonna watch later. But Jack and Mary, if you're still watching, then hello, thanks for waiting to the shout outs. Uh, oh, Olivia says you could put the pencil in the middle of the metal ruler. Yeah, I could actually, couldn't I? Yeah, I guess that's what it's for actually, now you mention it. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Although, mm, don't know actually, Olivia, because you really want to have the pencil right next to the measurements. I think it'd be too far away there. You, you need to really be able to actually see like where the millimetre is touching it. Put her on the first line, not the start ruler. Yes. Can we hear the rocket ship story? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I kept saying in every one of these previous lessons, oh there's a really cool story about a rocket ship, about measurements going wrong. But actually I haven't said it twice, so I'm not going to say it again. And then in the Queen lesson earlier, the one with the story, Lego story time, we decided that I'll do a Lego story time on rockets and then I'll tell you the story then, because that fits in really well. So sorry Olivia, no, I know that's really mean. Sibling says, ah, but is the table accurate? <laughs> Very good. Oh, well done, Libby. Yes, it's excellent. Oh, hello, Suki and Arza and Eunice. Hello, good to see you. Oh, and Bella, brilliant, who says, I hope your poorly little ones are feeling better. Uh, yeah, they are. Yeah, they're just furious now, but they're not, they're not ill. So we'll, we'll see. It's all progress. Oh, thanks for your hellos. Yes, I'm going to go, I'll put up a thing now. The next show is going to be on rocket ships or satellites or I'll plan it anyway so that I can tell you the story about the measurements okay you lot thank you so much for coming um I'll see you next week for what are we doing not sure I'll put a thing up on Facebook <laughs>